The assassination of Jon Snow was the climax of season five, and this season we wanted to start right where we left off, with his body lying motionless in the snow at Castle Black. I don't think there's a whole lot of question about who did this and why. This was a very clear power grab. Who killed him? I did. And Bowen Marsh, and Othel Yawick, and the other officers in this castle. Thorne and Jon Snow have never gotten along, and it got to the point in season one where they came very close to coming to blows, and Alistair was conspiring against him from that point on. And it's a little bit like the assassination of Julius Caesar, where there were quite a few men involved in the conspiracy who all probably genuinely thought they were doing the best thing for the Roman Republic. He thrust a terrible choice upon us, and we made it. We're never going to fix what's wrong with this city from the top of an 800-foot pyramid. Tyrion's very much in a situation along with Varys where they're sitting on a volatile powder keg of a society. Fear has brought Marine to a standstill. Whoever you are, wherever you go, someone in this city wants to murder you. The enemies of Daenerys see a city ripe to be overthrown, and it's going to test Tyrion's political skills, his diplomatic skills, all of his experience. He's optimistic in a strange way for him. He's not generally an optimistic person, but I think he feels inspired for the first time, and he feels equal to the challenge that's facing him when it comes to Marine. The sons of the Harpy take orders from someone. Have you started looking for that someone? Your Grace. Sorry to disturb you. A ship from Dawn has sailed into the harbor. Marcella. It has been a rough couple of months for Cersei Lannister. She's still embarrassed and shamed. And then she gets word that her daughter's ship, the ship from Dorne, has arrived. So it's for the first time in a long time, and some good news, she can finally see her beloved Marcella again. But I think when she sees Jamie's face and she sees what's behind Jamie under the shroud in that boat, that that's the lowest point she's ever reached. One of the things that we always loved about Cersei, and particularly about Lena Headey's interpretation of Cersei, is that she's not an evil witch whose function in life is to perform evil. She's a human being, and one thing everyone has to admit about Cersei is that Cersei loves her children. What's happened to her is almost all she can take. The fact that she's got another child left, that and Jamie are the only things keeping her from complete despair. We're the only ones who matter, the only ones in this world. And everything they've taken from us, we're going to take back and more. There have been a few hints before that Mel Sandra is much older than she appears. Going back to a very early conversation with George Martin about her, she's supposed to be several centuries old. So we always wanted to show her true age, and we're waiting for the right moment. And this was it for us. Her confronting the reality of her situation, her appearance is a lie. Uh, just as the Lord of Light's supposed promises to her and messages to her were lies. At the end of episode one, she's in a place where she really needs to look her real self in the eye and come to terms with where she stands now. And we see the real Melisandre, which is quite feeble and aged, and yet you can see her in there. 